What is up YouTube? Today I got a special treat for you. Um, I'm here to do a quick look and overview of the Ducky Shine 5. Uh, I just came out here at the 2015. I'm one of the first people in the United States to get my hands on this. Um, I ordered it through mechanicalkeyboards.com. Um, they're based out of Tennessee. Uh, it's the first order I've ever done with them, but I ordered them and asked them a little bit of information about when this keyboard would be coming in and they were quick to get response. Um, nothing but good reviews for them so far. It's my first experience with them. Um, but it went super well, so let's get right into this. So we got the Ducky Shine 5. Um, this was last seen at Computex, so that was the last time it was detailed. Um, they had some reviews out on the floor, but I haven't seen any reviews yet on the actual keyboard itself by a um, end user. So we'll get right on the packaging. Um, on the back we got some quick specs. So Ducky Shine 5, the dimensions of the board, the weight, um, it's USB, it's a Taiwan keyboard, so um, that's cool quality. Um, a lot of keyboard manufacturers have been moving over. Um, DOS moved over to China. Uh, their quality's gone down because of it. Um, but Taiwan, definitely awesome. So um, some things they highlight here. Um, Two-piece PCB. So um, they have uh, two pieces now. So the switches sit on a PCB. And then another one sits in between that. The keys and the switches in that area to defuse the light a little bit better. Uh, we'll get into that and I'll show you that here in a little bit. Um, color palette. Um, so the cool thing that they're going to market with this is it is an RGB board, but it doesn't have any crazy software you have to master. It's all built into the board, changing colors is a piece of cake, and um, it's it's very polished. So I actually got, let's see if I can find the logo, I got the brown switches for mine this time. Um, I was using reds on a K70 before, so this is going to be a cool upgrade. Um, I tried out the browns at a local store and decided that those were the thing I needed to get. I originally didn't get them because I thought I needed the gaming. Alright, so let's bust this thing open. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so we open it right up. Um, we got a registration sheet and then we got a manual. Um, in the manual, Detailing some of the different features, so the coloring, um, the macro ability, and um, mostly um, color things. So the dip switches are in here as well. Um, I'll just get into those here in a little bit. Um, it's going to toss this aside. I've actually opened this already, so I've familiarized myself with the controls and I can explain this to you here in a little bit. So it comes out as one big chunk here. So accessories covered really quick. So the plug itself is just a standard mini USB, uh, gold plated. Um, I think this is kind of a cool approach given the removable cable because it gives you definitely a lot more portability and if this for some reason breaks or you need a shorter one or a longer one, you have the flexibility in order to change it. So there's the cable. Um, two other things they included here. So we got, um, looks like a year of the goat type uh, Key. Let me see if I can get this to focus here. This thing's been kind of a pain here. Uh, Alright, well, it's a year of the GOAT spacebar. Um, it's kind of cool. It's got like a, a paper, not paper mache, what's the word? Origami GOAT on the, on the thing. We got a keycap puller, uh, shape of a duck. No surprise there. We'll get into this here in a little bit. This was actually a complaint of mine. And then we have a menu key. So with the dip switches, you can re reprogram the Windows key to do different tasks. And then that that actually allows you to um, reprogram one of the Windows key as a different key. So it has a menu on here. I don't know if it's going to focus. This thing's being a pain. All right, so let's actually bust in to the keyboard itself. All right, so it's got a covering with some wax. And there's the Ducky Shine 5. So right off the bat, um, you can see it's got a nice uniform black appearance. Um, the keycaps have a slight texture to them. Um, overall, very refined and slick approach. Um, some quick key takeaways. Um, there is no numb lights up here, numb pads, scroll lock, caps lock. Um, we'll get into hear that a little bit on how that actually works itself. Uh, otherwise, um, the browns are really cool. They're definitely a lot better than the reds for typing and Really just in general, I think. You've got your Ducky logo down here on the keyboard, on the space bar. 
Um, it's a brushed aluminum finish look, but it's actually plastic, which I actually kind of like because A, it'll be super easy to clean, and B, you're not going to get smudges everywhere or scratches necessarily. Um, that might be a concern in the long term. You might get some scratches on the plastic though, versus the metal. The metal, you mean you'll scratch permanently, but this I feel like could maybe scratch, but we'll see. All right, so we got your dedicated volume controls up here, calculator button. Uh, that's a classic ducky thing. I, I like that these are dedicated volume controls on this one. Um, with the K70, it had that, so that was something I was afraid I was going to miss. Um, as you can see in the background, there's a white, and so that's that dual layer PCB. Let's see if I can get a key cap off here. So actually, let's just get into this really quick. So I've actually taken this out already. The keep cap puller doesn't work. So I don't know if they overlooked this or if this is from an older model or something. But this actually doesn't slip in between the keys very well. So you feel like, see, if you look, you're bending a key below it in order to pull out the key above it. And then in some areas, you literally can't pull, you can't get this in or can't get it out without having to wiggle it and bend the keys a certain way. I don't like that. I'd wish it would just slide in there. Maybe a wire one would have been more appropriate for this. Um, I was surprised Ducky overlooked this because, you know, things like over here, like I can't get this into this area because it's got the plastic bezel around it. So that's just a note. Let me get a key off here though. Maybe. All right, so here's what the switch is going to look like. Um, it's a clear RGB. The LED is built into the switch now, which helps with uh, dead LEDs. Um, and then you can see the white PCB in the background. So that helps reflect some of that light up and kind of diffuses the light to glow behind the keys as well as through them. All right, so now that we got the front done, let's go ahead and check out the rest of the board. So you got your rubber feet down here. Um, these are actually pretty cool. I like these. Uh, they just kind of twist off. So if you want it flat, you can have it flat. Or if you're more of an elevated guy like I am, you just twist them on there. They're very rubbery, so they, they hold very well. Um, and then you got your four corner rubbers right here. And then you got your classic Ducky logo, Ducky nameplate, and then the big Ducky uh, engraved logo on the plastic. Here's the dip switches. So we'll get into this here in a little bit in the manual, but these allow you to custom set um, what you want the lower like control keys to do. So you can change your Windows key, your Alt key, your Control key. Um, you can turn on and off N key rollover to 6 key rollover, which I don't necessarily know the exact point of that, but it's an option. Um, I think it's really cool that they include that on here, and that kind of just goes to show you how, um, I don't know, they kind of give you that customiz customizability within the keyboard without having to have any, you know, funky software. Um, and then this area right here, so this is actually where the cable connects. So. Originally, when I had was looking at this, um, the cable goes in here, so it goes in at an angle. Kind of reminds me of like a, a electric leaf blower. So you put it in through this, and that helps protect the cable itself. And then it's plugged in to the port that's over set up right over here. Um, it's gold plated. It's nice. Um, I think I might get a new cable for this because I don't know if I like how flimsy and I don't know. It's not necessarily the bulkiest cable, um, which is nice and. I don't know if it's because I had a big braided cable with the K70 before or what, but overall that's actually a pretty cool feature that you can remove that. So if you ever do want to change it, it's possible. Okay, so I think the next step is going to be plugging this in and showing you guys some of the backlight features. So just a second, let's head over to my desk and put this bad boy up there. So. I noticed right off the bat this thing sticks to the mouse pad like crazy. Like I'm moving my whole mouse pad with this. Like it's not, and I'm not even putting any pressure really down on it. So that's definitely a nice thing for me. I like things that are stable. It's got a lot of heft to it, um, even though it's, you know, plastic front versus my K70, which had the aluminum. Um, it's still got a ton of heft to it, which is a nice feature because it gives it the rigidity. But it, I don't know. It, it's got a solid build quality, even though it feels like. You know, even that, not that it feels like plastic, but even though it is plastic itself. So let me get this plugged in for you guys real quick. So it just goes down into the little hook down here. So we'll go ahead and just put the cable in, plug it in first. Make sure you put it in all the way. And then you tuck it into that little slot. And then you flip it over and you're good to go. So I'll just show you what it looks like. So I'm plugging the front USB right now. So that's just how that's going to be. 
in my chair over here for us. Okay, so I'm gonna fire up my computer and we'll get right into showing you the RGB setup of it. Um, I'm not a huge RGB guy necessarily. It's not really why I bought the board. I didn't want to buy the Ducky Shine 4 because why buy it when the Ducky Shine 5 is coming out? Um, so as you can see right now, it's doing the snake move. This is what I had it set up as. So we'll go ahead and just go through the different settings. Um, you can see these on the Computex video and a lot of other just like quick look videos from when they were at the, the trade conventions. But um, I'm just going to go through them for you guys right now. So. Um, the big key here is the FN key that's right here, and then your F9. So F9 controls single color related patterns, and F10 does the RGB patterns. So F9, um, so right now we're on reactive mode, so wherever you hit, it lights up. Um, F9 again, now we're on wave mode, wave reactive. So where I hit, it does a wave out in each direction. Um, F9 again, we're in the line reactive is what I call it, so it goes down the entire row of keyboard from on that line you hit, so B, it goes out. F9 again, I think we're off, and we bring it back to solid. So originally when I pulled it out of the box, um, backlight was really low, and I got kind of worried, like is this really as bright as it gets? If you're not, I just didn't know how to use the keys, so FN, F7 controls the backlight, and there's seven steps. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Off, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's bright, um, you can get really anywhere. So I'll turn the light off. I mean, it's got some pretty cool brightness to it. It's cool how, like I was saying, the white diffuses the actual color in the background. Um, that was definitely a big thing. It gives, the gl it gives more of a glow look in the background and it's a very even coverage across the board. So I'll keep the lights off for now. Um, so I'll actually just go into the color here. So F4, um, F5, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. well, I'll just do the color selection. So F, Fn and spacebar brings up your color palette. So this is all the colors you can choose for the entire keyboard. So we're in single color mode. So we're gonna go ahead and start. Let's just do red, for example. So that brings up red, Fn, and spacebar. I think this is a really cool approach. There's not any crazy software. I mean, I think it's cool to have, you know, customizable patterns and stuff in terms of you know lighting effects but I think it's awesome that you can do all this stuff right here on the keyboard and not have to go into software and store another program on your computer so we'll do green for now all right so we'll go back through this so it's in a breathing mode so the cool thing is is the different modes hold the color that you set it to so we're in blue breathing mode right now because we were in blue when we were in the breathing mode last time so we put it on green so it goes back to blue because that's what we were in in this. So now it's a wave mode across the board. Pretty cool. Um, I think this is my personal favorite. So this is the snake across the board. Um, I just think it's kind of a cool little thing to have going on when it's just sitting over here idling. And since you guys have already seen all the rest, so we're reactive, we'll bring up the RGB modes. So F10, this is just your breathing with all the different RGB colors. F10 again and you're going to be bringing kind of like a waterfall effect it goes down the board f10 again you got a rainbow snake so this like slowly changes color as it goes down and then it completely changes the color once it resets um, and then you got your shine mode is what i like to call it because it does a flicker on all of them um, it kind of reminds me of the this is what i think of when i think of the ducky shine from the computex videos and also just from kind of the box in general then you got your active rainbow, so RGB, not rainbow, whatever you want to call it. So it changes color every time you hit a key. Then you got your wave reactive, which I think is really cool. And then you got your line reactive. And then you got off. So I think that's awesome. Um, like I, I can't stress enough how nice it is to be able to do this stuff on the fly. Um, changing the color, it's easy as that. So boom, new color. Um, from there, we got, so if you hold FN and F11, you can actually set up your WASD keys to do different things. So maybe you want them to do your RGB effect while your the rest of your keyboard is a different color. So let's say we want the rest of the keyboard to be, um, let's say like a really light, let's just say white. Well, then the WASD is over here doing its own thing. So FN, F11, now it's back to normal. F12 controls your arrow keys over here. So you got your red, blue, white, green right now. 
and then again it's got the rainbow effect and then again it's got just back to normal um, so this is definitely some cool cool little feature to have especially if you're you know gaming in the dark and these are the only keys you need to have reference for to figure out your way across the keyboard so with the exclusion of the lights up here for your caps lock they have the light on the LED is actually turned off for that so when you turn on caps lock it turns on and off the, the light itself same with scroll lock and the same with num lock which I think is an awesome feature um, that might be a pain if you're trying to find something though in the dark let's say you need to find num lock but I feel like it lights itself up enough the keyboard itself that it's not you know not necessarily an actual challenge for you to find um, like I was saying earlier the dedicated volume key is awesome to have um, definitely was gonna miss those um, calculator pulls your windows calculator up no problem and then from there um, that's pretty much it for the RGB features um, you can do like your own programming um, I actually haven't really got into that yet but you can program you know this key to be green this key to be that it's a little more involved um, I think the instructions could have been maybe a little bit more clear on how to do that but once again it's all built into the keyboard so setting this stuff up doesn't require software it doesn't require you to be on your original computer so I can take this to my laptop and have it doing the same things that it's doing on my desktop um, same thing with macros all the macros are stored on board um, there's a macro, macro record function so you record something that you want the keyboard to do and then assign it to R as your execute key so then it executes your macro for you um, overall this keyboard so far has been awesome um, I've used it for the entire day I typed a 3,000 word paper on it um, instantly recognized some a uh, little bit more keyboard accuracy I think that's more due to the MX Browns moving from the reds but you know overall I've had a lot better experience on this board um, I think the layout of it's really nice it's got a compact feeling to it you know it's very straightforward it's elegant the keys are definitely of a lot higher quality um, I don't know let's see if I can get a get one of the keys from before so the menu key leaves that an example so I mean the thickness of the walls on these like these don't bend like the, these won't bend like I can pinch them pretty hard and they're not bending it's like rigid um, with my K70 they had just the flimsy cheap you know ABS keys and they you know and they didn't have any any heft to them at all I probably could have bent them or snapped them or cracked them in half if I really wanted to with these I mean I'd have to actually try with some pliers or put all my weight on it um, which is definitely you know it's just a general build quality thing um, you know this is a more expensive keyboard than what I paid for my K70 it was RGB before so I mean if I had to you know give a true recommendation just based off of literally today alone I would definitely recommend the ducky if you're you know if the prices are within a decent reason of each other um, outside of that um, I think that's all I got for you guys today uh, hopefully this review helps answer any questions you have for if you want to get this keyboard um, I'm for sure available if you guys have any comments or questions just you know pop those down there and I'll definitely get back to you guys as soon as I can um, thanks for watching today guys um, take it easy